So Halo Infinite's multiplayer has been out for a while. I finally had a chance to sink some time into it. Now I can properly give you guys six tips that will instantly improve your game while playing Halo. So if you want to see your kills go up, but your deaths go down, well stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? Kevin here bringing you a tips and tricks video when it comes to Halo Infinite. In this video we're going to cover proper settings, how to utilize the movement within Halo Infinite, how to aim in the game as well because it's very unique, understanding the weapon sandbox, map knowledge, and just improving your general game sense. So if you guys like these tips and trick kind of videos make sure you tap that like button as it really helps out the video and channel get a better place within that YouTube algorithm. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as it ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, well make sure you tap subscribe so let's get right into the content here. So my first tip, number one, is setting yourself up with proper settings. This will lay a good foundation for where you can start to improve on your game when it comes to Halo Infinite. I did recently release a video talking about your best settings for your controller, mouse and keyboard, and video and audio settings as well. Because having proper muscle memory for your hands when it comes to your mouse and keyboard or controller options would be very crucial so then you don't have to think about how to play, you just have to think about what's happening in game. Having proper video settings also helps create a much more smooth experience. If you're constantly having frame drops like below 60, for example, which can, can happen with like consoles and lower PCs, then you definitely wanna make sure that you have proper settings. Audio is crucial as well. You may be able to hear what's going around with you in game. Most of us are wearing gaming headsets nowadays. And so utilizing audio would be crucial to hear footsteps where gunfights are coming from as well. And all of this can be controlled within your settings. So I highly suggest just checking out the previous video I uploaded about having the proper settings that will most likely set you up in a good situation to do well in Halo Infinite. Number two on the list is understanding the movement within the game. Beyond just base movement speed, we have sprint, slide, and clamber all returning in Halo Infinite. Sprint can be very useful from getting from point A to point B in a rather timely manner, but it's not super advantageous, honestly. Your base movement speed works pretty well, especially on the 4v4 arena maps. I really only ever utilize sprint when I absolutely know I'm in cover going to another spot and then once I'm going out of cover to stop sprinting so my aim is properly placed ready for engagements. Sliding is a great mechanic to try to get a little advantageous movement on some players as well. A really nice technique is what I like to call the super slide, where if you're sprinting, jump, hold, crouch, land on a downward sloped surface, holding crouch, and then as you start sliding, you'll speed up quite a lot, jump out of that slide, your momentum will carry you forward, which can actually make you move through the map a lot faster. This is great for opening routes and just general gameplay as well. I am sliding all the time down slopes because one, it's really fun, and two, it's very advantageous. Clamber is back in Halo Infinite, but it doesn't necessarily replace crouch jumping, which is key in Halo as well. My main rule when it comes to crouch jump or clamber is crouch jump as much as possible, but clamber when you need to. As utilizing a crouch jump won't make you go into an animation like clamber will. That way your gun is up and always ready to shoot in case you're ever caught off guard when making a jump, but sometimes you just have to clamber and it's also very advantageous to utilize as well. On the topic of movement, a really important thing, one of the most important things you can do in your movement is strafing. What strafing is, is a right to left movement while you're in the middle of a gunfight to dodge shots. The most important thing about a strafe isn't necessarily going left, right, left, right. It's about being unpredictable and countering the enemy's movement. So the example of a perfect strafe would be left, right, left, jump. As that final jump just makes you a little bit more difficult of a target to hit. Though you rarely want to utilize jumping in the middle of your gunfights as it makes your movement way more predictable as you're just in a singular arc, you'll find it a lot better within the middle of gunfights to actually just strafe left and right. But sometimes a jump can be very useful. Another maneuver you can utilize is an evasive maneuver called Strong Side. It's named Strong Side because it's developed from a former Halo Pro back in Halo 3. What he would use to do is in the middle of a gunfight, if you find yourself in a situation that's not gonna be in your favor and you try to evade, turn your back to the enemy and look down your feet while going into cover. What this does, it lowers your head from the back so it makes that headshot much more difficult to hit. I take advantage of the Strong Side maneuver all the time while I'm playing and it helps me get out of a lot of sticky situations. Now our third tip, which I'm sure a lot of people have been wanting to know is, aiming, how do I aim better in Halo Infinite? It's a shooter, how do I shoot better? One important thing is to keep your reticle at chest height at all times. 
Oftentimes I see players running around with the reticles looking down at the feet, looking down at the ground, maybe just not looking in very predictable locations. Keeping a reticle around chest height of a Spartan does a great job of having, preparing yourself to get into a gunfight. Essentially, you always have to be ready because these 4v4 maps are rather small so the action is always tight. The important thing to know about Halo Infinite specifically is with the precision weapons that the weapons are hit scan. That means you don't have to lead your shots. Previously in games like Halo 3, you did have to lead your shots, but in this game, you just click right on the head, the bullets will go straight, ideally. When it comes to clicking on heads, it's only necessary when the player's shields are very low or down. For example, a battle rifle is a four shot kill, but those first three shots can just be anywhere on the body that count the same amount of damage, but that last shot you want to be a headshot. Same thing with like a commando or like a sidekick as well. Aim for the chest as it does the same damage no matter where you shoot, but once you see those shields pop, aim for that headshot. Halo doesn't play like Call of Duty or Battlefield or any other kind of modern military shooter out there where headshots rule king when it comes to any kind of situation. Headshots are only necessary when you need to do them. I suggest jumping into weapon drills in the academy to understand the intricacies of each weapon and understanding how much damage you need to deal with each weapon before you can get a kill. Number four out of six on this list of how to get better at Halo Infinite, that's understanding the weapon sandbox. There are three main damage types within Halo Infinite. There is kinetic, plasma, and electric damage which is new to Halo Infinite. Generally, kinetic weapons are good against health, plasma is great against shields, and electric damage does a great job of area of effect damage and also continuous damage over time. Electric damage also has the ability to stun vehicles, so if you have a dynamo grenade or you have the shock rifle or any kind of electric kind of weapon like a disruptor or something like that, damage the vehicle with electric damage will actually stun them and completely stop that vehicle, which is very advantageous. Also understand that each weapon serves a specific purpose within the sandbox. It's not all about dealing damage and getting kills with every single weapon. So I would suggest again, jumping into training mode in the academy or jumping into weapon drills to understand the intricacies of each one of these weapons within the sandbox. Number five is a crucial thing for you guys and that's understanding the map. Map knowledge is absolutely huge when it comes to getting better at Halo Infinite. So understanding the locations of weapons, equipment, and power-ups when it comes to the spawns within Halo Infinite's maps will greatly improve your gameplay. Knowing when a power weapon will spawn up on the map can make or break a loss. Another key thing is learning specific jumps. Halo Infinite has these little specific jumps throughout the entirety of the map where you can traverse the map in much more unconventional ways. And I highly suggest taking some time in custom games, jumping around seeing, hey, can I get to that ledge in some kind of way? Learning player spawns is super important as well. Basically, with the way the spawns work in Halo Infinite is if your team is spawning on one side of the map, most likely the team is spawning on the other side. We'll deal in this a little bit later with the next section that we got coming up here. But keep track of where you're spawning where your teammates are spawning and how you can build up this game sense where if you're spawning here, your teammates are over there. That means you can understand that the enemy team is going to be coming around that corner. Having a really good opening route is crucial to do well in Halo Infinite. At the beginning of a match, everything is on the table. You have power weapons, you have power ups, you have very good weapons like battle rifles and commandos, secondary power weapons like heat waves and shotguns and things like that. So you want to figure out ways in the beginning of each map to have a very effective way to go to where you need to be. So then you can get to those really good items first and deal out a lot of extra damage. When it comes to map knowledge, a really important thing is to learn the callouts. Eventually when you want to upgrade yourself to get into ranked mode, which will have tips and tricks videos about how to improve your ranks within Halo Infinite. This will help provide a common language for all players to understand. So you say, hey, he's under pillars or a big door on a specific map. You'll know what people are talking about. The last one I want to talk about is very important is your game sense. Basically a way to play off of your team. Game sense is a term referencing your awareness of what's happening in game. So being aware of your spawn, your teammates spawn, when weapons, equipment, power-ups are spawning up as well, and just understanding the general flow of the gameplay. Another thing that really helps improve your game sense is keeping an eye on the kill feed and also utilizing the scoreboard within the game as well to understand who's dead and who's alive. If your team has killed three out of the four players on the enemy team, Team, that's a great opportunity for you to push up to get more advantageous locations on the map. Or if you're playing objectives, that's a great time for you to jump on the stronghold, make a pull on the flag, grab the ball. While we're talking about objectives, a really important thing when it comes to your general gameplay is to not have tunnel vision on objectives. I can't tell you how many times I saved me so many players just 
throwing themselves on objectives feel like they're doing something for the team and really they're actually being more detrimental going like 5 and 20 trying to constantly go for the same hill in strongholds or constantly running straight into the enemy's spawn for the CTF flag. Sometimes staying alive is more important than going straight to the objective. This plays into my previous tip of understanding how many players are up and alive on the enemy team for you to make a proper push. Generally what you want to do is slay your way to the objective, not just constantly throw your body on it. And the best way to slay to the objective is by staying near your team, but not too close. Essentially you want to be close enough to where you can help out your teammates say if your teammate gets into a gunfight they lost then there was a guy who they leave a guy one shot or something like that you can quickly go around help them out clean up that kill but you never want to be too close where you're both peeking the same corner looking at walking out the same door basically where you can get killed by the same grenade this also plays into you not overextending there's generally like an ebb and flow when it comes to the 50 yard line of how far up you can push you don't want to push so far where you're completely surrounded by enemy teammates but you also don't want to stay so far back where you're just hiding back in the spawn the whole time you want to be up front with your team to press the issue onto the enemy team and once you get those kills to take the enemy team down that's when you can push up and get into more advantageous locations all of this plays into your game sense so if you're new to the channel or missing any content from me recently check out this playlist right here i got a link to all my halo infinite news and informational videos we've been uploading daily about thank you so much for watching i greatly appreciate it i'll catch you on the next one peace out